How about folks? Welcome to Argenta Matica and welcome to a new video. This time I'm going to review this liquid cooling of this brand that began to be sold a couple of years ago on Aliexpress and has already arrived. For example, in other stores such as Amazon. In this case, we are going to see the Frozen Warframe 240 Black R, a liquid cooling IO of 240 millimeters, quite economical. So without wasting any more time, let's move on to the review. Well, here we have Thermal Ride Frozen Warframe with LCD screen, 240 millimeters, black. So let's proceed to open the box and see what we have inside. Well, it comes pretty well packaged. Here we have the manual, of course, for the installation for each type of socket. And now, let's see what it has inside this box. Well, in addition to the liquid cooling, which we are now going to see, we are going to see what brings us inside the little white box, this one that it had. And here we have the USB that is surely connected to the pump. Now we are going to check it. But hey, it's to control the RGB, of course. And here we have a bag with all types of brackets and adapters. These bags come with these plastic adapters that are for the different sockets. For example, 1700. M4 and M5. Depending on the socket, it has different heights and different widths the whole of this adapter. Here come the screws for socket M4 and M5. Here good for the Intel 20XX. That could be the 2011. And then another type of screw that regardless of the socket we are going to use. And finally, in this little bag, so we have more adapters for, for example, AMD, which is AM4. You can see these adapters, and these are the Intel ones. And then, of course, we have the author that goes on the back of the board, that for the processors. Given this, now we are going to see the liquid cooling, which at the moment, I like how it is presented. It is fine. To be honest, well protected. And let's see. The first thing that caught my attention is the gold detail that the pump has. We have the LCD screen and these details that are all around, plus this frame. I think it's very good, to be honest. The material is all plastic, of course. This front is extracted. I didn't know this was the case, but it's magnetic. This is basically so I can rotate it. Depending on the position we leave the pump, we can rotate it. And the four sides, let's say, we can rotate it 360 degrees. Then, on the front, in addition to the screen, comes the name of the brand, Thermal Ride with the protector that we are going to remove later. Then we have here some initials. And here we have the USB-C connector that I understand is for this cable. That's right. It's for this one that I've shown you. This one goes here to control the screen. And of course, leave the data that we want to show on the screen that we are also going to see later. And then, well, as I told you, this is all plastic. But it's a plastic. It seems to be made of good material. It's not bad. Issue of tubes, okay. It has these fasteners. You could say that depending, well, how we place it, we can adapt it to our energy and to be able to rotate or leave in a specific position the two tubes through which the liquid passes. The tubes are quite flexible. I like it. It is neither too rigid nor too flexible. Okay, the long, well, of course, 240 millimeters. Let's not expect tubes that are too long. And then, issue of fans. Well, thermal rays fans are generally quite sober. They come with cables, that is. They don't come blankets or those that fit directly, I don't know, with an adapter with a lock, 
with a fit. But well, they are already screwed. Everything comes assembled. They are with RGB. Here we have the power connectors. The power, you could say, and we have the RGB ones. The radiator, as I said, 240 millimeters, good materials, obviously all aluminum. Here on the fans, it tells us the direction in which the airflow is going to go. I think all that's left is to try them. So I'm going to make a setup of a team and we're going to test it to see if really for the price, I'm going to tell you later, it's going to be worth it. Actually, before I forget, well, of course, the bottom where it is. The copper plate and here we have, as I said, the screws where they are anchored to the motherboard with the adapters. So I'm going to put the PC together and we're going to pass the tests. For the installation in this case, I am going to do it with Intel, with which I am going to use the Intel adapter, and what I did not mention before, that also includes a syringe, or a syringe with thermal paste, so it is also important that it includes it. Tools not included, but good. We only need a screwdriver, and that's it, nothing more. So we are going to do the installation on the motherboard that in this case I asked to use. One that I presented a few days ago, last week on the channel. This tough gaming that comes with the connectors on the back. If you want to see the video, I leave you the link in the description of the full review of this motherboard. So, it's new. I haven't tried it yet, so the first thing we're going to do is connect, or rather, fit it. This has a glue on the back so that when we turn it over, the adapter does not fall off. So we're going to put it like this. We put it on. I know it sticks. We do a little bit of pressure. We rotate. And now, yes, we're going to put these plastic adapters that will give it height so that it can hold the water pump well. And that's as simple as it is. We put one and four, it doesn't matter which side. If like this or so, it's the same. There it is. Now let's move on to putting the processor. We place it as always very carefully so as not to bend any pins. There, we go down, we press. The socket cover comes out. This one made of plastic and we close. Now, perfect. And now it just remains to put thermal paste. But first I recommend you, that you can imagine or have already seen in the box, in the case, how the liquid cooling is going to go. Because if it's going to go this way, I'm going to put it I imagine the box, it's going to go like this. So this has to be like this. So I recommend that you first know how you're going to install it so that you just don't install it and you have to remove it again to be able to correct it, which has already happened to me a few times. And now we need to place these adapters, which this is installed this way. One here and the other one here. I always recommend that you try it first. In this case, it will go like this. We present it, more or less. We see that it is going to go well. Perfect, that's it. Now we need to adjust these adapters. Here it is, it's these screws. So these are placed here. Do not tighten them too much at the beginning to be able to see later if the liquid pump fits well. See if it fits well because perhaps it would have to be moved a little then do not adjust it completely, leave it a little loose to be able to correct the position. And once that's it, that I know how this is going to go, I can adjust these screws so that it's nice and firm. First, of course, get this plastic out. We adjust on one side a little and then on the other side a little. And we place, obviously, the LCD screen. I'm going to try it, which I didn't say, with an Intel 14700KF processor. I think it's a good processor to test this liquid and see how it behaves when we demand it to the maximum. To be able to control this liquid cooling, we need software that we are going to download from the official website. 
And basically, what you're going to be able to do from this application is control what appears on the LCD screen, which is a 320x240 pixel IPS LCD screen, which we can extract. That I don't find any sense, but well, we have it there to be able to extract. We have several modes where we will be able to change the background and the drawings that we want to appear on the LCD screen. And we can also modify where we want to be given information on temperatures, fan revolutions, liquid temperature, etc. We also have cartoons, that is, animations that move as you are seeing on the screen. We have a lot of both and we also have the possibility of putting videos, but the truth is that it takes a long time to load and I don't see any sense in it because it's a very small screen. But if you want to put a logo of your channel or a photo of someone or a repetitive video or a GIF, you can do it with this liquid. The first test I did was with the Cinebench in Multicore. And yes, temperatures soared as you are seeing on screen. More than 100 degrees. I think it reached 102, 103 degrees. So if you are going to use your PC for multicore, such as Blender programs or 3D rendering, this liquid is not for you to use with those types of programs. Then I did the test in single core, which is the majority of performance that we are going to demand from our processor normally using editing a video or playing. And the temperatures, as you see on screen, are much more normal. They have the maximum at 65 degrees. So I think that in this case, the temperatures are quite good. But since I didn't want to stop there just benchmarking it, I wanted to try it in at least one game. Well, I downloaded the Tomb Raider and did my own benchmark at maximum performance, maximum graphics, and it gave the following results. In this case, the average temperatures are very good because they were 65 degrees, as I said, average and maximums only had a moment, a peak of 70 degrees, which is quite good for the size of the liquid and for the processor we are using. Importantly, the temperatures set on the LCD screen of the liquid cooling are a disaster. You're seeing on the screen that it's showing normal temperatures, and on the LCD screen, it's reading 176 degrees or something like that. Crazy. So, if you want to control the temperature of the screen, don't do it because you're going to go crazy. You're going to think that your processor is going to burn out and it's not like that because they are false results. As I said, you can find this liquid on Amazon or Aliexpress at a price of between 70 75 euros. I leave you the links of both Aliexpress and Amazon in case you want to stop by to see it or if you want to buy, I leave you the links in the description. I think this liquid cooling can very well support Intel's 12th generation processors or AMD equivalents. I can't tell you what's the worst liquid cooling or what's the best. I can only tell you that maybe for a little more money, you will be able to find a liquid cooler to lower the temperatures of your processor a little more. But as I said a few seconds ago, if it's for gaming and you don't mind the LCD screen setting any temperature, I hope you like this review. So if that happened, I'm going to ask you to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share this video so I can reach many more people. Without further ado, thank you very much for being there, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.